Uh, oh, okay. Um, oh, let's see. Um, oh, okay. Um, uh, okay. 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 No. Well, thanks. Uh, uh, well, that, well, thanks for that, Noah. All right. Well, and um, oh, see, uh, see, excuse me, guys. Looks like that my vi my video was um, uh, disabled for some reason. But is it okay if I if I if I talk the way I am, even though y'all can't see me? Or sure. Just try to. Uh, you can fix it when you're not speaking. Okay. Uh, Oh, okay, okay. So over I think we just lost audio though. Can you guys hear? No, I can't hear. Scott, can you can you I think we can't hear you. Try muting and unmuting yourself. Hey, uh, how about now, Slay? There we go. Yep. Now we can hear you. Okay, here we go. Here we, here we go. There we okay, go. The, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> right. And anyway, so over overall, at the overall, I thought everyone everyone did well with the meeting. Uh, sl uh, uh, slate when it came to your idea, your idea about the ro uh, about the Rotary Club. That was a good idea. I also got, got the impression that it was more that, that it was more more of an uh, more more of an uh, the more of an uh, advocacy spe advocacy speech you speaking on uh, speaking on on behalf of, Ro of rotary so uh, so since that sounded more like a speech i thought i thought you did well in explaining to people uh, what the good what the good that the rotary club uh, rotary club does and why people should get interested in it so good so good on that the only other th only other thing i recommend is based on it's just you know, getting a hang on the technical things, but uh, but everyone has that these days with Zoom. But other than that, though, good idea, good idea with your speech and and uh, co um, and Courtney with your speech, it was a good. I thought, thought your idea was good. In fact, it, it gave me the impression that I was listening to um, a, a TED talk actually. Yeah. So uh, so overall, you guys, good jo uh, good job on your speeches. Uh, and moving up, moving on to, to, uh, to table topics. Um, no, I thought you did. Uh, no, I th th thought you did pretty well with the qu with the questions right there, especially like the question. You know, absolute slight idea of, uh, about br uh, bringing the whale. <laughs> that was a new one. <laughs> Any, anyway, uh, so overall, questions were uh, were good, and I got the feeling that everyone sp spoke as well as they could, could and and we're and we're and we're definitely on time for that. Over uh, and over overall, though, I think meetings go meetings gone uh, gone good so far, and and looking for looking forward to hearing what the rep reporters have to say. So back to you, now. Scott, make sure to call the evaluators. Uh, 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 oh, the evaluators, right? Uh, oh, right, right. So sorry about that, man. Okay. So all right, and at this to, um, right. So as uh, Slate was saying, at this time, I'd like to call, like to call our evaluators to the to the stage. I think our first one is um, uh, Tori. I think is that right? It is so. Yes, me. Alanis first, and then Trisha is second. Uh, ah, okay. Um, oh, okay. Um, uh, th okay. Thanks for that, you guys. Well, any, anyway, um, well, so it's all yours, Soren. Okay, thank you. So today I'm going to be looking at Slate's speech about the Rotary Club. And so I took some notes about it and filled out the evaluation form here. So I really like how you overall structured your speech, Slate. I'm not going to lie, I enjoyed the PowerPoint. I didn't know what Rotary Club was. So it's kind of interesting seeing what they did and how, like, you learned about it and all the various projects and programs that they did. So it's kind of informational. And I felt that unlike many other speeches, most speeches are mostly just like talking about experiences. Yours was kind of different in that you actually presented a research topic and was really informative. Um, I really enjoyed your hand movements, for example. Like I'm not really doing hand movements right now, but like I like how you did hand movements in your speech. And uh, some of the things that you could work on, um, there was actually very little that I could really go at you for, but I decided to add some criticism because otherwise it would be like too uh, perfect of a speech. So for my criticism, I'd just be like, you could add a little bit of humor or emotion at times. It felt kind of like you were just reading from the side, which isn't bad for like a research, like a research presentation or for a speech. But I felt that if you like maybe, I don't know, cracked a joke there or like talked about something emotional, I don't know, just draw the reader in more and just feel more engaging instead of just like some sort of like lecture that I'm listening to. And um, I guess really challenge yourself and maybe you could talk about 
what makes Rotary Club special to you or what you hope to do. I, I don't know if you're planning on joining Rotary Club or you're already a member, but I just want to see your own personal output. Like, have you done anything in Rotary Club that you enjoyed? Um, are you planning on doing anything in Rotary Club that you enjoy? Anything like that, and maybe just like more of a personal touch would really seal the deal and make the speech overall a good speech, I guess. So uh, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. um, um, well, but you muted. Uh, I, I am. Uh, yeah. 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 No, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um. Um. Anyways. Um. Any. Anyway. So I'm. Thanks very much for that, man. Uh, I agree with the. Um. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Very good. Uh, very good advice you gave to Slate. And at this time, I'd like to co like to call on uh, call on Tr Trisha at this time to uh, for, for her to give to give any advice for Courtney's speech. All you, Trisha. Thank you, Scott. Courtney, I really loved your speech. I found the topic, not only the topic, but also you yourself as a speaker, very relatable. Um, you mentioned in the beginning, like how you're moving out of your apartment. And so that really helped build uh, the relationship between us as the audience and getting to know you as a speaker. And then from there, you really broke down um, some really helpful tips as well as some really interesting facts that I wasn't aware of before uh, listening to your speech. Um, so you really excelled in your vocal variety. Like one of the great examples that, you, um, that occurred during your speech was when you talked about your current skincare routine and, and you're saying like, my skin looks better than ever. Like you, you picked up your, 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 your tone and that helped, uh, like, ca it caught the attention of the audience, and it brought a little bit more excitement to your speech in, in that uh, making your place more sustainable make, uh, without breaking the bank can be and is exciting. Uh, another part of your speech that I really liked is when we listed out um, the, the facts about how we produce billions of tons. Um, not only did you increase your tone, but you also slowed down a little bit. And there was a little bit of a pause between each of the, the two statistics. That helps kind of sink it in a little bit um, and really like soak in, like, wow, that's a lot of um, tons of trash that we produce as, as humans. Um, some things to, that I think you could work on for your next speech. Um, I couldn't quite tell, but um, I was like trying to like look at your eye contact and there were times that you would uh, make eye contact to the camera, which is really great, but I could also see your eyes roaming a little bit. So I wasn't sure if you were reading off a script or looking at um, uh, not or not, not necessarily a script, but just like an outline. Um, so one thing I would encourage you for the next time um, when you're thinking about your speech, thinking about your main points and using that as like your memory tools, so to speak. So that from, once you have like a memory, uh, once you have like a main bullet point, then you like in your brain, you already have cemented the, the rest of what you'd want to say for that point. Uh, another thing um, for, for next time, I couldn't also quite tell just with the camera positioning, um, but hand gestures, especially when you make um, those big statements um, about the, the tons of trash that we use, like opening up your hands, like the tons of trash just to even further emphasize those points or, uh, or talking about how the costs are actually really low, like you can make like really low just to kind of bring that uh, physical gesture and further emphasize your points. Um, but overall, I really uh, loved your speech. You brought in um, the three parts of your speech with, um, with your ethos, making yourself as a relatable speaker with your pathos, really appealing to our emotions and talking about the, the tons of trash that and how we're, we're damaging Earth over its capacity. And finally, um, uh, Pethos is this logos. So using your logic, um, using the logic of hard proven statistical facts to really further develop your point. Um, overall, I really loved your speech and looking forward to your next one. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, oh, oh, all right.
right. Thank you. Uh, uh, all right. That was good. Um, oh, that was that was pretty good, Trisha. Thank you. So over uh, so over uh, so, uh, so over uh, overall, Soren and Trisha, I think you guys. Um, I think I think you guys gave both uh, Slade and Courtney, you know, very good of uh, uh, very good advice as far as what to lo look for on their next bit on their on their next bit next speeches, especially Trisha, what you were mentioning as far as. Uh, uh, as far as far as highlighting what Courtney did is uh, using the logo logo center spit in her speech just to prove um, out pre prove out those fat facts she was pointing out. Overall, I thought overall I thought uh, thought you got thought you, both you guys did a good job. And at this time, I'd like to turn it back to uh, to Noah. At this time, take it away, Noah. Sorry, our postmaster. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, pardon me. <laughs> I will take the stage. So I didn't time Soren's um, evaluation, but I'm pretty sure it was in time when I was like looking at the clock. Um, and then Trisha, you were in time. Uh, yours was three minutes when I was also looking at the clock. So that's my bad. Um, but overall, great job on evaluations. Um, a lot of great feedback from both of y'all. What I'm gonna go ahead and do now is uh, call on my reporters. So the first one is the grammarian, which is Trisha. So if you wanna give your report for the meeting. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, overall grammar was pretty on point. Some really great grammar that I that I really loved. Um, um, so like when you mentioned like rotary and rotarians, like even though there's a little bit mix of there, I, I didn't even know. So that's like a cool um, word play on the club and how you call members of that club. Um, Courtney, uh, there is, you mentioned without breaking the bank, so that alliteration, I really liked that, um, and it was very eye-catching as well. Um, let's see, table topics, oh yes, uh, Soren, um, so you mentioned, well, we make friends with anyone, where, or we make friends with anyone, anywhere we went, so again, that alliteration, anyone, anywhere, I think some, like, when you use absolutes, it helps demonstrate your points just something to be also wary of because sometimes it can go wrong in the opposite direction you might not expect um and then you also said making friends when we were young i think if you said younger i mean young i, I it can be like a relative term like right now we are considered young but then to like a, a, a toddler we'd be considered old um so just uh using i'm not exactly sure of what the grammar point of that is but um there's that um courtney i like your the term that you use relationship goals slate openness um the term that term can be used um, like you used in your table topics can mean a lot of things openness to people openness to experiences so i like that uh, and finally um even our miss alexander um, i liked how you said never be afraid to try and so i think that's a really great example of using absolute so never be afraid to try that uh, really helps really bring you, um, your points out and that you further explain in your table topics. Um, some things overall for the group, um, I think just using some slang or like some abbreviated versions of words like uh, I'm gonna or it should be like I'm going to or I wanna, I want to or because um, someone I think used cause just like the abbreviated term. So just to be wary of I mean, those things come up naturally in conversation um, but when giving a speech, just to be aware, and I think that can come along, um, particularly if you have a prepared speech, um, whether you like you practice recording yourself or something, just listening for those things that you say. Um, what, and then finally, one last thing, I think Noah in your table topics, I liked your slides, but I think one of the questions you asked was missing a question mark. So also anytime, whether you're filling out the agenda or you're making slides for a speech or table topics, just doing um, a brief grammar check or even doing the automatic check um, just to make sure that you're on point. Otherwise, uh, looking great and um, good grammar for today. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Trisha. Uh, so the next reporter will be our all counter, which is Joanne for this meeting. So Joanne, if you want to go ahead and take the stage. Thank you, Madam Table Topic. I mean, Madam Oh my gosh, Madam, Madam Toastmaster of the day. There were eight and Joan, you're breaking up again. Am I breaking up again? Yeah, we, I think I, it got choppy after the, uh, you started your third filler word. 
Okay, can you hear me clearly now? Yeah, it's back. Okay. There were four lights and the last one was 101 Oz. That's my report. 101. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Perfect. So our last reporter, um, I was kind of doubling up. So for table topics and also speakers. Um, oh, sorry. The first speak speaker. So slate speech was out of time by about, I want to say 20 seconds. Um, oh, 756. So about a minute over. And then Courtney's speech was in time. Everybody for table topics was in time. Also, I'm going to say that all evaluators were in time just based on um, eyeballing the clock. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is have everyone send in their votes of best evaluator to Noah as well. And then I'll hand it back over to him to give us the votes for the meeting. All right, just at least send me those votes. I'll start tallying them up. All right, so I'll go ahead and actually let's see how the votes for the best table topics, votes for the speaker, and votes for the best ebook later. So I'll go ahead and start with the votes for the best speaker. Um, at first place, we have Courtney. Yay, Courtney. Um, great speech. Very good speech. And then second is Slate. Another great speech. Um, for our table topics, uh, first place we have Miss Alexander. Yay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for bringing her, Scott. Awesome. You know, never be afraid to try. Never want to regret it. And second place, we have Soren. Soren's speech was about um, his childhood, you know, being able to do things that he can do as a child but not as an adult. So great speech as well. And let's tally up our evaluator. Um, so our best evaluator is Trisha. Great job. Thank you for catching up, question mark. So great job, everybody. Courtney, Trisha, and Miss Alexander. Thank you so much. Now we'll pass it back to our Toastmaster today, Tori. Awesome. Thank you so much, Noah. Great job. I'm sorry, what? We can't hear you. Oh, can you guys hear? Can you hear me now? Maybe? OK, yeah. cool. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, great meeting, everybody. I thought it it went smoothly with like all of our roles, but I would just say technical difficulties, which we can't really change. It'll be so much better when we're back in person. I'm so excited to be in person again. <laughs> but um, overall, great meeting. I'm glad everybody could make it. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Slate to give our closing remarks and also fill the roles for the next meeting. All right, thank you, Tori. Awesome job as Toastmaster of the day and timer as well. As she said, I will give a few closing remarks and we'll also assign some roles for next meeting, fill up those roles and we'll adjourn the meeting. So uh, I'm gonna start off with a few tips I've got for a couple different areas. So first tips for speeches, uh, especially pertaining to this meeting. Uh, these can pertain to all speeches, so table topics as well. In the online setting, I would definitely recommend, and this is almost more to myself than to everyone else, put either googly eyes or a picture of something right there behind your camera. Because my eyes, I'm getting distracted by myself, even right now, it, the, the chat at all times. It's when, when you're speaking, you want to be looking right at that camera, so you're looking right at everyone, so your eyes aren't all over the place. Maybe occasionally, you know, looking at a note card or the chat for your time. But yeah, definitely put some sort of visual aid for yourself on your laptop. And the second, just like Tori said, we had sort of technical difficulties can happen. So best advice is practice in the actual environment. For example, for a prepared speech, instead of just practicing your speech sort of in front of the mirror, if you're doing an online setting, actually set up a Zoom meeting by yourself and 
use your PowerPoint, the Zoom all in one thing, because I was definitely having trouble with that myself. So those are some tips I for speaking roles. And then I have some tips for reporter roles. Um, so it was fine. We, Tori missed timing for the evaluators. I've definitely messed up his timer because all the reporter roles, like I've said in the past, requires you to be attentive the entire meeting. Hopefully everyone is attentive the entire meeting, but not only attentive, but also paying attention to whatever you're supposed to be doing. So all counter, got to be counting all those filler words, keeping track, which one's most prominent, timer, make sure you're timing every single speaking role. So just a little tip to help do that and improve on your role is say your role's duties in full when the Toastmaster of the day calls on you. So for example, say as timer, you could say, I'll be the timer for today. I'll be timing everyone's speeches, prepared speeches. I'll be timing five to seven minutes, table topics, one to two minutes, evaluators, two to three. And I'll be leaving you a marker in chat at the minimum halfway. And just that's a nice, simple introduction to help remind yourself and everyone else. And second, this applies to almost every role. Make sure you actually prepare. Almost every role has a small bit of preparation, at least, even generally evaluator and timer. We have a checklist we've created as a club. We've shared that. We can share that again. Make sure to reach out if you have any questions at all about any role. And yeah, because one major thing is make sure you know not only your role, obviously, what your duties are for during the meeting, but other people's names, especially when they're members, recurring members. For example, as general evaluator, know who your evaluator is and what and who the speaker is that they're evaluating. Don't be like, who's the evaluator today when you're general evaluator? Um, so all that takes a little preparation, have the agenda in front of you even. And yeah, so that goes for all roles. And just a remark, definitely the word ah uh, was our prominent filler word. Uh, it's a pretty common one. I think we can definitely work on that. And then I think those are all my tips. I'm going to jump into signing roles. Let me pull up our spreadsheet we have. And share my screen. Here we go. So as always, we have our Google Sheets role sign up. It's always free to edit with the link. And you can sign up for speech as well in advance. For example, Justin, he couldn't make today's meeting, but he went ahead and at last week's meeting signed up for a speech the following week. And we'll just go down with any volunteers. And if you want to volunteer for a particular role, feel free to shout. I've only got a couple people on the video, so feel free to just start talking. If you have anything to say, I can't see if you're raising your hand. And um, yes, Joanne, you can definitely make announcements yourself. We'll do that after this. And so we'll just start with top. Would anyone like to be Toastmaster? I can do that one. Is that uh, Scott? Yeah. yeah. Awesome, Scott. Table topics, would I like to be table topics? Great job to Noah. I think we've been knocking it out of the park with our themes and our questions. Amazing job by Noah today, uh, his theme of life. I think I found that really fun. Would anyone like to give a shot next week as Table Talks Master? You get to create your own theme and questions, and you can really take it any direction you want. You can definitely look for inspiration online for pretty much anything. You can get really wacky with it. We've seen some great things in the past. Would anyone like to? Who is, is that Courtney? Yeah, it's great. Uh, yes, definitely. Definitely reach out. You have any questions at all or want to see some past ones and review the role checklist as well. So we already have speaker one is Justin. Would anyone else like to give a speech next week? Make some progress towards your pathway. Noah, do you want to sign up for a speech? Either um, next no, week no, no, no. or... I was actually week. looking at the schedule for mm -hmm. next week. Um, I think I might be able to listen next week. So we got next to... week is the 20th and then the following is the 27th. Okay, I can make the 20th. 
All right. So, so next week's meeting, you want to do a speech? Yes, sir. Awesome. Sounds great. But yeah, this is a great opportunity to get some speeches out of the way and really get some practice before we get on campus. If anyone else wants the speech, either just write it yourself or uh, just speak up. Past that, we need a general evaluator. And general evaluator and Bella, it's the meeting in its entirety. It also calls on the leads, the evaluation section, including uh, bringing up the evaluators who evaluate the specific speakers, and then you also have to evaluate their evaluations. So, and just a reminder, the Toastmaster table topics, pass your first speech, and general evaluator are all member roles. You have to be a paid. You want like to be? I can be TE. That Trisha? Mm -hmm. Awesome, Trisha. Sorry if I just butchered your name. I don't know why I have so much trouble. There we go. All right. And if we have two speakers, we don't like to be an evaluator. And definitely ask any of us for tips on that. You are evaluating their speech on what you think they did great, what you think they could improve on, particular parts you liked. And we also have a checklist to give you some tips on that as well. So, Aaron, would you like any particular role for next week? I can be an evaluator. Okay. Do you want to evaluate anyone in particular or? Uh, no, I can evaluate either one. Noah, did you want a particular person evaluating you? Or do you not? Fine. Um, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. I think uh, it's totally an option. I'll go ahead and put myself down for evaluator two. So, we need. Evaluator one and our reporter roles. Let's see here. Uh, has anyone, have I missed anyone? Would you, anyone like to do a role for next week? I think we've just about covered it. I won't be here or I won't make it. Okay. That's okay. That definitely happens. We, uh, Again, we, we've been pretty consistent. I just want to applaud all of us because every week can be a lot, even though we sort of, a lot of things have been canceled and whatnot, everything going on. We've definitely done a great job. I think Soren said, didn't you say you wanted to do Evaluator 1, maybe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you say that, Soren? Yeah. Awesome. Look at that. We got the Evaluator Master here. He's going to be a pro. All right. That that that's also what I did, um, Soren. I, you've done at least two or three speeches, right? I remember when I first joined Toastmasters, I did like just a ton of evaluations. I don't really know why. Um, then we have the reporter roles. We'll try filling those, or might have to double up if that's uh, something we have to do. All right. But yeah, we'll we'll see you uh, the next week after Tori. I think that's it. I'll go ahead and close this out. Again, if you have any questions about roles or anything Toastmasters at all. And Courtney, have you gotten into pathways around the topic of stuff? Do you need, have any questions about that? Yeah, I, like, I don't really understand how, like, to merge pathways and what happens in the meeting. Because it, like, it has, like, it asked me about the icebreaker, uh, but I don't know how to, like, how, who I should talk to about, like, check, checking off that I did that, I guess. Yeah, totally. So if you don't mind, guys, we it did just hit six o'clock, but I'm going to run really briefly through pathways for any guest and just a quick refresher for everyone. So you can access Basecamp through, just go to Toastmasters website, click on pathways, and click, go to Basecamp is what it's called. It'll take a second to load sometimes. And essentially according how it works is you have the project and you want to start the project before you actually give the speech typically. So probably for your icebreaker, it happened for mine too. I already went ahead and gave it before I became a member. So you'll have to do that one retroactively. So it might be a little weird, but past that, you'll want to do your, um, the part that's required. It's like your before assessment and all the steps that tells you how to do that particular speech. Oh, I just clicked the wrong one. And then, You'll do all the material that says to get ready for the speech, and then you'll do your actual speech. And then at that point, a crucial part is your speech evaluations. Were you able to get that to Trisha today? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so that's a crucial 
part is we have our speech evaluations. So I'm doing leadership development, so I'll just open mine up to show you. So this is base camp. Once you start your first pathway, and again, you can take a quiz. You want a recommendation on which one to pick. And then you just have the five levels. One, two, three, four, five. It's recommended you take it in order, but if an opportunity comes up, you can take one in a different level. So here's icebreaker. And I actually still have to go back and do it. I haven't done it. So I just did this third speech. So what you do is you click launch. And then this will be your project. Load here. And so what was your particular question again? How do we check it off? Yeah, so do I just, um, like, is it something that you guys will do on, on like, another end? Or, yeah, how do I say that I've done it yes. or completed it? Yes and no. So it should. So let me put this down. So first of all, there's a drop down here. You can go see all the parts of your project. Navigation just tells you how to navigate the project. And then there's introduction. So I'll introduce your project. And then you have assess your skills before. So that's the part you need to do before for all your future speeches. And it's just a, as it said right there, I'm sure you can just read it, but it's sort of to rate how you feel about that. I'm confident comp. So typically it'll probably be below four, most likely, since we're all pretty new speakers. And then hopefully on the after, it'll improve a little. You go back down here and then you're gonna go through give you all the material on how to give that effective speech for that project. So it'll tell you how to prepare and present. And then you have after your speech, and you'll read all that, go through it. And then there's also your evaluation section. You can get the evaluation there as well as online. There'll be outline for your speech. And depending on the project, there'll be other materials. And then assess your skills after. And you just do this as well. So you probably haven't done this part yet. So go back in and do assess your skills after. And then once you complete all that, so I'm not the best example because I actually haven't done it for any particular project yet, but it should say change from in progress to complete or something of that nature. And then once you complete every project in a level, that's when another officer will have to check it off for you. And all you do is you click this button um, Trisha should know this because she she did it and I have to go approve it for her but you just submit it for verification or completion and then we check it off. So the only point you need to do that is once you complete an entire level. Does that answer that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you just work through that for all your projects at that level and then right here pending prior training level one completion that should open up once you do all these. But yeah and there's a a lot of resources in here. But yeah, so if anyone else has any questions about that, definitely ask. Let me end that. Stop sharing. A quick five minute presentation on that. And any other questions about Toastmasters in general or anything else they'd like to share? I'll open the floor to Joanne. All right. Joanne, you can. can I oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. Actually, uh, since you're already speaking, you can introduce our guest, uh, Mrs. Alexander. You can introduce yourself, say your name, where you're from, and uh, what you thought about the meeting. Great. Well, my name is Enid Alexander, and this is my son, Scott. I am, I was, ooh, I was born and raised in Houston, Texas, um, but I've been in Atlanta for 40 years, um, but I'll always be a Texan. But nevertheless, um, it's very exciting to be here. Um, I have been working part-time at Dillard's and a colleague of mine loved her Toastmaster chapter in Dunwoody. And I said to, I said to Scott, well, you know, now that you're in, in, in Georgia, I bet they have a chapter there. I think you should look into it. My friend Monica says it's really good. And so I was so glad that he did. Um, I was very, I was really enjoying hearing you talk about Rotary because I was a member of Kiwanis Club for a while. And um, it's neat to hear about the history of the Rotary Club. So I really enjoyed that. But I, I just want to say overall, I am so blown away by how you guys are so, um, gee, I don't know, light years away from where we were at your age <laughs> back in the day. And I, I just, I, I'm just very impressed by everybody. And I wanted to thank you for letting me join you today. Yeah, of course. Ghost guests are always welcome. We're glad to have you. Um, 
yeah, that's awesome. Glad you enjoyed it. And I think that's a perfect segue into uh, Joanne. She's going to tell us about TLI and how it's actually open to all members now, if I'm correct. And Joanne, uh, after you explain that or before, whenever you want to mention it, you can also talk about um, how there's five other clubs in Area 54, if uh, you can mention your particular club's meeting time. Yeah. Uh, with that, you can take it away, Joanne. Thank you. Um, let me let me do one thing. Let me get a list. Just one second. The as you all know, there's two leadership trainings per year in the summer and then one in winter, and they're called Toastmasters Leadership Institute. Am I breaking up? Tell me when I am. It, it was, and then it got clear. I'll I'll make yeah. sure to tell you. Oh, good. The for the next. Well, there's a TLI that's offered next Thursday. No, this Thursday. So sign up for that one. But the division ETLI will be held on Saturday, August 1st from 9 to 1. I encourage all officers to attend it. It is free. It's via Zoom. I will be sending the information this week to all the presidents late. If you'll share that with all the other officers as well and members, because certainly members are invited to attend. You'll there are two parts of it. You will register via Eventbrite, and then you will get an email from the district trio inviting you to register via Zoom. I, I, I think that well, we went through a district TLI on this past Saturday, and it was really good. It was a lot of information. There were 200 people there via Zoom. I encourage again all officers to attend so that we can meet, meet our distinguished club goal number nine at the end of the year. In terms of the, let me back up. If you have any questions, please reach Breaking out. up just a little if you want to give okay. it a second. If you have any questions, please email me or reach out to me. Slate, you've got my information, right? Yep. Just ask, and if I don't know, I'm good at saying, I don't know, but let me find out. Sounds <laughs> but good. I, I do want you all, if you are at all able to attend that first one on August 1st for Division E. There are, there are five other clubs in the Athens area. athens Clark County Toastmasters Club is a corporate club, and it's open only to athens Clark County government employees. It's open to everybody. We meet on every Tuesday from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock p.m. We have exciting meetings just like you all do. You all, Which one was that again? The name of that one? Okay, that was Athens Toastmasters Club. We meet every Tuesday from 12 to 1. Our meetings are energetic and exciting and funny. I again, I because it was energetic and funny. I liked the table topics. There's also Classic City Toastmasters. Classic City meetings on first, third, and fifth Thursdays from six thirty to seven thirty. Green County Toastmasters in Greensboro, Georgia. They meet second and fourth Tuesdays from six o'clock to seven o'clock. Then there's the Toastmasters of Hope in Athens. And this covers our entire area of 54 clubs. Toastmasters of Hope meets on, third, on Tuesdays, second and fourth Tuesdays as well, from six to seven, as, as Greene County does. If anybody is interested in attending any of these meetings, certainly I will send you this information and who the president, that would be the list of presidents as well. So you can reach out and attend the meetings. I have enjoyed attending all the club meetings. I have one more club to attend. Uh, it has been eye-opening and very enlightening. I've learned quite a bit. There is a lot about Toastmasters that I don't know, but I'm excited about what I do know. So I encourage you all to attend other meetings in club meetings as well. But Slate, I will send you all the information about the TLI. And I look forward to all of you being at the TLI on our first day. Thank you for that, Joanne. Yeah, I'll definitely look forward to hearing info on TLI and 
uh, I'll make sure to forward the meeting dates of all our Area 54 meeting times as well. Thank you for all that info. And with that, Noah, we can adjourn the meeting. This was an awesome meeting. All right. Can you guys see me? My screen is frozen, but I think you guys can see me. It's black, but we can hear you. Okay. Um, well, hopefully that goes away. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today on this wonderful Monday. Um, it was nice to see some new faces. I'm sorry we missed you last week, Joanne, but um, awesome meeting, and now this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much.